Hi folks, welcome to lesson four, Health and Infection with Prisma Science. Uh, last lesson we looked at describing the parts of the non-specific and the specific defense systems. And I left you with some practice questions which look like this. Um, now's your opportunity to check your answers. So if you want to pause it on the next couple of slides, then please do so. The first set of answers are here. And the second set of answers are here. Okay, today's lesson follows the normal routine. Uh, if you haven't got the little bits and pieces you need, now's your chance to pause the video and go and get them. Otherwise, let's start with our retrieval practice. Uh, this is B1, health and infection. Pause and retrieve. And these are the answers to the questions. So if you need to pause and just check through or revise some of those, then do so now. This is also B1 health and infection. So if you like to pause and retrieve. And the answers to the questions or the tables here. So if you'd like to pause and revise any of this, then do so. And the final set of questions, which is also B1 health and infection is here. This is what we did last lesson. And all I'm looking for you to do is draw the picture that we drew for each of those keywords at last lesson. So if you can pause and retrieve now, and the pictures are actually here. Now we're gonna use this code today, so make sure if you don't necessarily have to revise it, but make sure you just get those pictures firm in your head now as, as, we, as we go through them. Uh, so today's lesson is really about putting together the full story about how white blood cells fight disease. You're gonna need uh, a few documents again, uh, something which looks a little, little, bit like, a little bit like this attached to show my homework. Uh, if you don't, again, if you can't, print from show my homework, then copy things down into line paper. And then we'll use, this is our, our practice questions for today. And this is gonna be an extended writing question, which we're gonna have a go at today. So if you need to pause now and go and get that stuff, or even write it down somewhere, then now's a good chance to do it. I'm gonna switch this over to our camera, which I've just done. And I'm also gonna get rid of me. So I, I don't distract you. So uh, we're looking at how white blood, blood cells uh, fight disease. And there's three main ways which white blood cells fight disease. And we're going to talk them through on this piece of paper. So in the top box, I'm going to draw a picture. If you could do the same. As I draw the picture, I suspect if you've done your recall properly, you've done the activities properly, you could identify what that is. That is our white blood cell. So I'll put it right at the top because it can do one of three things. Uh, the first thing it can do, if it encounters a pathogen, which I'm gonna draw in this box, so let's put the pathogen here. This pathogen and the antigens on the surface. The first thing it can do is this process. Which I'm hoping Lots of you could tell me what that process is. That process is called phagocytosis. And phagocytosis starts, it's got little steps in there, but the first step is here. Um, what we call this is engulfing. Engulfing simply means wrapping around. Um, the, the white blood cell is wrapping around, or beginning to wrap around the pathogen. So we'll write here, white blood cell, engulfs pathogen. So I'll pop that into box two. I'm going to move down to box three now. Now the next thing which happens is this. So if you just watch carefully, I made it a little bit smaller, the pathogen doesn't really get smaller. I'm going to do this. So 
So what's happened is the pathogen has been taken inside of the white blood cell. And we call these structures vesicles, uh, not really necessarily at GCSC, but they do have a name. So they're taken inside. And what happens then into here, the white blood cell will empty some enzymes. So I'm going to indicate that by doing some dotted lines across here. And those uh, enzymes essentially will break down the pathogen. Chop it up into pieces, essentially, but we don't use the word chop it up. We use, we use the word break down or digest. So enzymes break down pathogen. Okay, to box four. Then what happens is this. Whatever fragments have been produced from that, that breaking down that digestion are released back into the blood. So I'm going to put here pathogen fragments are released into blood. Now they're not inf they're not infectious or damaging in any way. The, bl the blood is just cleared uh, of them. They don't stay there forever. They're cleared by um, organs like the liver. Um, but essentially, it's, it's the, the pathogen is be broken down and um, and discarded. So that's process number one, which is called, as I said, phagocytosis. Process number two involves antibodies. So I'm just writing antibodies at the top. And this is what's, what would happen. I'm going to put my white blood cell just sort of hanging around the corner there, really. So I can draw some other stuff here. So that's the white blood cell. And then here, more or less center stage, we have our pathogen. And then certain types of white blood cells don't initially engulf. They'll do something else. They will produce these things. Uh, hopefully you recognize those things as antibodies. So I'm going to write down here white blood cell releases antibodies. Now those antibodies, you probably worked this out already, those antibodies are going to do this and well, that's when i was drawing that shape to get that really, really important to get that complementary shape that antigen will fit precisely into the antibody so what you have here is the antibodies will attach to the surface of the of the pathogen by the antigen so i'm going to write down here antibodies attach pathogen and they sort of act like flags really uh, or signals and they essentially will send a signal for this process to happen oh, anybody's on the outside which again hopefully you'll recognize is the process of phagocytosis. So white blood cell engulfs, white blood cell engulfs the pathogen and it gets broken, sorry, the pathogen gets broken down and the fragments are released, etc. So that process will continue. So that's two ways. The final way is, uh, well, the final way that white blood cells will respond to pathogens is by the release of antitoxins. So if you remember rightly, uh, here might be a toxin from a pathogen. 
And over here again, I'm going to do my white blood cell just in the corner. And then I guess lots of you will know the picture I used for an antitoxin here. So white blood cells. release antitoxins. And then you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out what's about to happen. So we have got our toxin. And again, we have a complementary shape. The toxin fits inside the, uh, the antitoxin, sorry, the, the, yeah, the toxin fits inside the antitoxin. So here I'm going to write the antitoxin attaches to toxin. And really that's pretty much the end of the process, but I've got one more thing to say. So I'm going to redraw this picture. And so, and when they are those two things are attached together, um, that toxin is no longer will no longer cause cell damage. So I'm going to write here, toxin, and no longer cause cell damage. Okay, there you go. So essentially that is um, how white blood cells fight disease um, from start to finish. Uh, you are going to do uh, the following things, please. I'd like you to learn the process. Learn the process in pictures. It's probably best because you getting those pictures cement in your head is incredibly, incredibly important. And then you can sort of learn the process in words. Secondly, so make sure you learn the pictures uh, to get that concrete in your head. After that, uh, I want you to have a go at today's uh, practice questions, which are, they are on... Uh, there are show my homework, but otherwise I, they're, they're here, but they're also further back in the video if you want to go back to those. And then the last thing I want you to do is have a go at this, an eight mark question. It says extended writing, doesn't actually need very much to write. You've got to be quite precise with your writing. So have a real best go at those things. Certainly the practice questions and the, um, and the extended writing question there. And then tomorrow I'll give you the answers to those. Uh, it's also worth noting tomorrow's lesson, Friday's lesson, you are going to have a recall test on everything which we have covered this week. So make sure you go over the new content, the sort of facts and the knowledge before you do that. It'll be knowledge based. And after that, I'd be really grateful if you will also complete the student survey um, on, on show my homework tomorrow. It's a little, just a little bit of feedback to me and the teachers as we sort of plan over Easter, what we're going to do next so we can shape the recorded lessons.